his cornbread, seedy as grain. He came out west on a northbound train. The crooks die laughing, but they're dead just the same. He's the shakiest gun in the west. Yeah, he's the shakiest gun in the west. He's got a phony pony that was made in Japan. He rides in the saddle like an elevator man. He's an underfoot, tenderfoot, king of the mess. He's the shakiest gun in the West. Yeah, he's the shakiest gun in the West. But he stands for right, both day and night. He may lose the battle for a while, but he'll win the fight. But he has a little trouble with his trigger finger When he takes aim, it's anybody's guess He's the shakiest gun in the West Yeah, he's the shakiest gun in the West He's a dude done over, you can see at a glance His boots are shiny and so are his pants He's got hair in his eye and a gleam on his chest He's the shakiest gun in the West Yeah He's the shakiest gun in the West, but he stands for right, both day and night. He may lose the battle for a while, but he'll win the fight. Yeah, he stands for right. Madam, please be patient. After all, this is the final examination for these dental students. It's important that you cooperate. Now, stay in your chair and try to relax. <laughs> Golly, Ned, mother. Relax. We go. <laughs> all right. Just uh, sit down there. There we go. <laughs> All righty, Miss Stevenson. Now, first things first. Now, we're just going to take a little look-see at your general dental condition. Sort of get the lay of the land. <laughs> you know? Okay. All righty. Open your mouth. <clears throat> no, no. Now, you see, if, uh, if you don't open your mouth, then, then I can't see anything. See, that's the way that works. Uh, come on now, Miss Stevenson. Seriously, open your mouth. Open up. Come on, come on. I'll just I'll help you here. I'll get that thing. Open that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, ah. Mm. ah. Mm. How are you doing, Haywood? Fine. Mm -hmm. Fine. Dr. Breedlander. What seems to be the trouble, Haywood? Complete closure of the oral cavity, eh? She won't open her mouth. Watch me carefully. Well, Miss Stevenson, don't we look lovely today? Yes, but we have a toothache, haven't we? A tooth saved is a silver dollar in the bank of health. Now, open your mouth, dear. O open wide. Are we going to open up that mouth? Open that rotten little mouth. <laughs> You're in my way, Haywood. You're in my way. I can't, I can't get loose. I can't. Here. You're on your own from here on, Haywood. <laughs> if you don't get that mouth open and get that tooth fixed, you don't graduate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I miss 
Stevenson. I realize that this is hardly the time or place to bring this up, but uh, I'd like very much to see you socially sometime. Oh, well, I... Uh... There. Ah! <clears throat> Everything uh, going okay, Haywood? Fine. Dr. Friedlander, faculty, students, <clears throat> and parents. As we uh, stand on the threshold. Louder! As we stand on the threshold of graduation, we may get the feeling that this is the end. This is really the beginning. Louder! This is really the beginning of stepping out into new horizons. North, south, east, and west. Speaking of west, that is the, dire <clears throat> that is the direction that I personally am going to. Why did I choose the west? Because the west is a place where few, if any, dentists have trod. So I am going to trot there. Why, Jesse? Why? Well, Mo, the West needs dentists. I mean, teeth are falling out right and left out there. Teeth are falling out in Philadelphia, too. Yeah, but Philadelphia is overrun with dentists. There must be seven. Gratitude. Gratitude. Some nice gratitude. But all the plan. All the nice surprises. Your Uncle George was going to give you an office over the harness shop for $3 a month. And Celia's Leonard, Celia's Leonard was going to give you four rolls of wallpaper. Blue ducks. 50 cents a foot, wholesale. Oh, Jesse, 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 Jesse. Mom, 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 mom. If he were mine, I'd know what to do. Put him across my knee. Butt out! I'm family. You're not family. I'm your aunt. You're not a real aunt. You're just my mother's best friend. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. 
How's it going, Haywood? Fine. Fine. Those half-naked savages must have colds all the time. Oh, Ma, that's an old wives' tale. Your average Indian's the healthiest person in the world. But, Jesse, dear, it stands uh, to reason Ma, that... <coughs> Call me, doctor. Uh, oh, excuse me, is this uh, car 24? Uh, all the way down, Mac. But, doctor, you've always been such a delicate little boy. You've got such touchy sinuses. You've always had your father's delicate sinuses. Oh, Ma. Now, don't awe oh, me. It's your father's sinuses that killed him. He was run over by a bear wagon. He was blowing his nose in the middle of the street. Well, I'm not going to cry. Good for you, Ma. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. Have a girl. If you don't believe me, ask Celia. I said, Celia, I'm not going to cry at the station. And you've always kept your word, Ma. You've always kept your word. <laughs> uh, is this car 24? Uh, back that way. Huh. Uh -huh. I bet you think I'm crying right now. You promised yourself you wouldn't. And I'm not. That's because you're strong. Ma. Just think, Ma. Getting ready to head west. In two days, I'll be in Ohio. In one week, I'll be in St. Louis. And in two months, California. Uh, <laughs> what an age we live in. Things are moving too fast. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> hey, hey. Excuse me, Buggy. Is this about it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, Ma. Oh, oh, uh, <clears throat> oh, you got something from the corner and you got a nickel. A nickel? Uh, no, no charge. Ma, what's that? Well, it got your Uncle Metcalf safely through the Civil War. Here, you may need it. Well, gee, Ma, that's kind of nifty. Wear it in good health. What? <clears throat> well, Ma, I well, guess this is it. Goodbye, dear. Write me as soon as you get to the West. I will. Bad Ma. Going out west, partner? Sure am, partner. Thank you, dear lady. Oh, uh, thank you, dear lady. Hmm. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> what is that? Wanatonka. Wanatonka? Lizard roll.
All right, everybody out of stage. Come on! Come on! Come on, let's go! And you up there, throw down that strong box. About eight miles out on the Willow Creek Road. They got the strong box. All, All right. right, come on, man. Let's go. I just love this kind of stuff. Oh, come on. Come on. Got a passenger for you on the through stage. Be sure he gets on it. Two hundred apiece. You know something, Penny? This is the first time I ever had this much money at one time my whole life. There's plenty more where that came from, Pop. I got two stagecoaches lined up next week, hundred miles apart. Hold it, Penny. Count me out. What? That's right. This was my last job. After thirty years of rustling cattle and holding up in banks and stagecoaches. I'm packing it in. This'll be easy pickings, Pop. Nope. I want to take this here money and fulfill my lifelong ambition. What's that, Pop? Go to Boston and open up a little dress shop. A dress shop? Oh, wait a minute now, Penny. Just because I'm rough and dirty and don't wear underwear don't mean that I ain't artistic. All the years we've been together, I never heard you mention that once. Well, I reckon it would sound kind of funny in front of the other gentlemen. Well, that's the way you want it. At least we can ride together as far as hole in the wall. A dress shop. Hold it, Penny. What is it? it sound like maybe 10 or 15 horses. Nice posse size. Let's get out of here. One thing to do. They're gaining on us every minute. Now we gotta split up. You follow that stream there, and I'll head north and try to draw them all. Good luck, honey. Don't get caught, Pop. Remember your dress shop. That looks like one of them. 
I just love this kind of stuff. Let's go. Coachings, I got a proposition for you. Not interested. Better hear me out. This paper's a full pardon. You dang fool. The marshal wants you to work for the federal government. It's a trick! I just love this kind of stuff. No, it's no trick. Now listen to me carefully. Somebody's been smuggling guns to some renegade Comanche Indians. What's that got to do with me? We need your help to find out who it is. The marshal wants you to work as an undercover agent. We've already lost two men. We figure they won't be suspicious of a woman posing as a homesteader. Well, what do you think, Benny? I don't know. We got enough on you to send you away for 300 years. Your ninny, he wants to give you a pardon. You read this. Is it a real pardon? It's got the governor's signature on it. You got yourself a deal. <laughs> hey, this is pretty exciting. You mind if I tell everybody? You do, and I'll shoot you right in the mouth. Could you tell me where I could buy a wagon and a good team of horses? Yep. Right across the street there. Abel Swanson will sell you anything you want. But watch him. He's real slick. He'll cheat you if he gets a chance. Yeah. <laughs> well, he'll have to get up pretty early in the morning to pull the wool over Jesse W. Haywood's eyes. Much obliged. Love your hat. Swanson? Oh. Howdy. Uh, I'd like to see your Mr. Swanson about getting a good rig and a team. Tao Fu Cho Ching. Well, I don't know anything about that. And you can tell him that just because I'm from out of town, I don't mean I don't know what it's all about. Good day, sir. Abel Swanson, proprietor, at your service. Uh, Dr. Jesse W. Haywood, dentist, Philadelphia. Ah, oh, a professional man. What a pleasure to do business with a man of science. Wong, our house is honored by the presence of a physician. Dong Sui Chow. Dong Sui Chow. <clears throat> Wong reveres knowledge. We are at your service. Uh well, <clears throat> I want to get a rig and a couple of good, strong horses 
And I'll pay nothing but a fair price. It's a pleasure to do business with a discerning man. Now, everything you need is right over here. There's a pot belly stove, wrought iron skillet, 20 pounds of flour, one axe, two extra hands. Now, uh, let's see, a stove, 750, skillet, 420, flour, 850, 975, or two hours. Add that up, will you want? Ching Ching That comes to $47, even. Now for the wagon. I have one picked out for you. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> 47 Just let this see. The stove was 750 Skillet was 420 and that's 1170 Ben, you have the... Have you ever been in the Orient, sir? Huh? Have you ever been in the Orient? No, I, I never have. It's amazing. Simply amazing. Wong, observe the analytical mind of the trained scientist. Skill in the arts of mathematics, physics, chemistry. Able to understand the machinations of the Orient for calculating abacus. Run over those figures again for him, Wong. Yeah, it's forty-seven dollars, all right. Extraordinary mind. You, sir, are amazing. Now, let's put you into a wagon. Right this way. <laughs> you are indeed a fortunate man. This is your lucky day. The wagon you are beholding, soon to be yours, is the only one of its kind west of the Mississippi. How much is it? Built of the finest oak, once owned by one of the great pioneers of our West, the late Sir Lincoln Boone. Uh, I know this is no time to bring this up, but how much is it? Excuse me. I'll let it go for a hundred dollars. How much? One hundred and fifty dollars. Now, that seems kind of expensive to me. Expensive? Yep. Too expensive for a vehicle worthy of transporting one of the great scientific minds of our day? Sir, this wagon befits you. Wong, let us not forget, our house is honored by the presence of a physician, Dong Sui Chao. Dong Sui Chao. Uh, uh, well, and uh, no, wait a minute. Uh, uh, listen, I, th I think 150 will be okay. Yes, so, yes, Wong, uh, add that up. 47 and 150. Dong Sui Chao Long. That comes to two hundred and thirty-two dollars and fifty-five cents. Two hundred and thirty-two dollars and fifty-five cents? That is correct. Well, well, figures don't lie. It's an even two hundred and fifty with the territory tax. And that'll be cash, of course. Territory tax. Gracias. It was a pleasure doing business with you, sir. Chop, chop. Oh, I'll see you. Uh, oh, wait a minute! I, I almost forgot. Well, what about the horses? I surely you jest. There hasn't been a horse for sale around here in over three weeks. Well, wait a second! If you didn't have any horses for sale, how come you sold me that wagon and all that stuff? We just like to keep busy. Now, you have no right to... What time do you have, sir? Huh. Uh, 5.30. We're closed. Well, now, just wait a minute! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Wait, you... How am I going to get out west? If I don't have any horses, get, get cheaters! Cheaters! Abacus can. Abacus! That's right. Penelope Cushing's. Uh, won't you come in? Uh, what can I do for you, Miss Cushing's? Well, First, I must warn you, I'm not taking on any new clients. I expect to be leaving town shortly. The moon is on the wane. You? You were looking for a woman, weren't you? Well, yes, but you're... Well, not like you. Expecting someone a bit more horsey? Sort of. Well, I'm what they came up with, so let's get down to business. Would it take the wagon train to San Miguel, with you posing as my wife? Oh. <laughs> it's strictly federal business. 
Once there, we get in touch with Will Banks. You've got a rig. Waiting out in the staging area. Any notion as to how the rifles are getting to the Indians? Nope. There could even be some on the wagon train we're taking. Well, now, do you have everything you need? Yes, I think so. Good. We'll leave day after tomorrow. Let's sun up. Strictly federal business. Strictly. Done and done. Shots came from across the street. This fella just staggered into the hotel. Did anybody call a doctor? Doc Gifford's out of town. Wait a minute. There's a doctor right here in the hotel. Dr. Jesse W. Haywood, room three. Come on, Lyle. Ernie, come on. He don't answer. Darn you, Lyle. Dr. Haywood. Dr. Haywood, wake up. Wake up. Let's go up there. We're coming. Dr. Haywood, Dr. Haywood, please wake up. Doctor, we have an emergency in the lobby. Emergency. <laughs> Stand back, give this man air. He's probably got a badly impacted wisdom, too. You fool! Here's the trouble. Hey, you sure handled that nice last night, Doc. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> uh, look, I hope I didn't give the hotel a bad name by fainting. I mean, I feel bad about that. It would make me feel terrible. Your shoe's untied. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Thank you. I, well, I'll just uh, uh, I'll tie it over here. Uh, um, uh, ma'am, oh, um, ma'am, uh, what, wait, just, just, uh, oh, um, ma'am, oh, ma'am, uh, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am, uh, I just wanted to express my deepest sympathy and to apologize for, uh, well, what happened to me there last night. Uh, see, actually, I, I'm a dentist. See, I'm not a doctor, and, well, when I see something like that, I just sort of go all fuzzy. What's a tender ninny like you doing out here in the first place? Uh, ma'am, uh, uh, now, I realize that that may have come about as a result of your grief, but I don't like to be called a tender ninny. Tender ninny. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now, all right, I'm going to tell you something. I'm in teeth, and I came out here all the way from Philadelphia single-handed to fight oral ignorance, and I intend to go further west. West is that way. West, and I'm going to find me a couple of horses, and I'm leaving on the next wagon train out. Now, what do you think about that? 
Um, are you going to take your tree and your dog along with you? Sorry about your husband passing on, ma'am, but rules are rules, and I gotta stick to them. No women alone on the wagon train. Uh, look, Mr. Welsh, I have got to get on this wagon train. No single women. Company rule. Well, I've got to find some way. Well, the only thing I can recommend is you find yourself a husband by 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. A husband? Mm-hmm. All you need is something wearing pants. Going that way. Oh, West is that... You just uh, sit right down there, and we'll just take care of it. I probably should have made an appointment. I realize how busy you must be. Oh, golly heck, there's always, always room for an emer <clears throat> emergency. Tell you what, uh, could you just uh, uh, open your mouth? I need my mirror. Oh. That's okay. I've got to get something else here. Oh. Uh, do you know something? Huh? When you turned away, I noticed your profile. It's really very attractive. Uh, uh, profile? <laughs> Oh, your hands. Oh, they're lovely. The hands of a surgeon. <laughs> yeah, my, my hand. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, hands have always run in my family. Do you know what I think? You're very nice. You know what I think? What? I think I might faint. Ah. Uh.
How did a wonderful professional man like you escape marriage all these years? Well, uh, I've always felt I was a little too thin for marriage. Oh. And besides, uh, my main mission in life right now is, is to go west. How strange fate is. I, too, am alone and going west. And suddenly, out of the blue sky, I meet you. A big, tall, handsome man. Now, wait a minute. Just, just wait a minute. I, I don't even know you. I'm crazy about you. Isn't that enough? Now then, the witnesses there, Mrs. Longbow and Slosh White, are 25 cents each, payable immediately following the ceremony. Fine. Can we speed it up, Reverend? The wagon train leaves in an hour. Look, but this is so sudden, Miss Cushing's. I mean, you just don't fix a tooth one minute and then get married the next. The song is 50 cents extra. Would you like the song? Uh, yes, fine. fine. Oh, promise me that... Someday Let's go, Reverend. During the music? Yes. All right. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Uh, I can't get married without telling my mother. There isn't any time. We've got to catch the wagon train. Uh, 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 Jesse. Uh, Jesse. My mother will never get over this. She'll just never forgive me for this. We are assembled here in the presence of God to join together this man and this... Now, what? You, we're strangers. You know that, don't you? I mean, I'd at least like you to meet my mother, maybe even her friend Celia. Speed it up, Reverend. She has instructed those who enter into this relationship, etc., etc. Now, that's not Episcopalian. By the authority invested in me by the church, I declare that you, Penelope, and uh, you, uh, uh, Jesse, uh, and you, Jesse, are here by man and wife. Boy, Just hold it, hold it. I don't, I don't feel at all that this is uh, actually. I mean, the whole, the thing. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, maybe we better hurry if we want to catch that wagon train. <laughs> Well, well, well. You did it, ma'am. What's the new name? Dr. and Mrs. Jesse W. Haywood. Well, good for you. You ready to go? Wagons West! That's a ticket. Just pull up behind that last wagon. Right. Ah! Nice going. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just so darn excited. Mr. and Mrs. Hiram Remington, Atlanta. Dr. and Mrs. Jesse W. Haywood, Philadelphia. Dr. and Mrs. Jesse W. Haywood, Philadelphia. Reverend Sacre Gant and my loyal minion, Matthew Bash. Nice couple. This is great. What are you trying to do? Get us thrown in jail? Oh, a pretty little thing like that and a derby dude. They ain't likely to be federal men. We can't trust anybody. Now remember that. Come on, fix it. Reach me. Willie! Willie! Here, Mom. I told you to do that before we left. Oh, boy. Keep your eye on the road. I just can't believe it. Tonight's our wedding night. A few hours will stop. Make camp. Have a little supper. It's Betty Bye.
I was in the same boat as you 35 years ago. Is that right? I'll never forget my wedding night as long as I live. I bet. I cried like a baby. What do you want? Are you Betty by? I suppose so. Guard duty, Dr. Haywood. You're kidding! I come to relieve you, Doc. I reckon you got some chores you want to fulfill, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, good luck. So I decided to take a walk. That's all. Well, you'd be lonesome too if your husband were on guard duty. It's our wedding night. Lovers quarrel, that's all. All right, back to bed. Gosh, honey, I didn't realize you missed me so much. <laughs> I wonder what she's up to. Don't you get it, Zach? She's got the sweets on me. <laughs> I have the same trouble every place I go. Women just come running after me, wanting to kiss me on the mouth.
six done. Winchester. Haywood Wagon, it ain't with us. Remington! Tyler, some of you men, let's go! <laughs> Who'd have believed? Doc's a gutty little cuss. Right there. There he is. tell that you kind of fell far behind the main wagon train. How did that happen? Well, I'll tell you. That was on purpose. There was a reason for that. You see, it was all part of the plan. It was all part of the plan. As I said, it was all part of the plan. See, I'd been spotting their signs for quite a while. He wasn't spotting their signs. One, maybe two miles. And then a plan began to formulate in my mind. The plan began formulating in his mind. I figured I'd lay back a ways and draw him off the main body. That was to give the wagon train a chance to get away. Chance to get away? You want to let me tell this fella? 
See, there's one thing you gotta keep in mind about Indians. Them Indians is ten times as scared as you are. Ah! Uh, didn't mean to scare Indian fighter. <laughs> Character. <laughs> one of ours. <laughs> I wonder. What? If that skinny little Philadelphia Jasper could be a federal agent. <laughs> he sure looked like a dentist to me. How would you know? You ain't never seen a dentist in your life. No need to poke fun at my only weak point. I don't know what you're talking about, lady. I'm a roofer. Been a roofer all my life. Don't know nothing about the federal government. Sam Huggins would be talking to you now, but they shot him. Get in the wagon. It was a dodge. Look at those clothes. He's a gunny for sure. <coughs> yep, Matthew, that's our man. We've got to get rid of him. How are you going to do it? Simple. I'll have you pick a fight with him. Gun him down in the street. Now, uh, wait a minute, Reverend. Uh, I ain't gonna tangle with him. What's the matter? Afraid he'll kill you? That's part of it. The main thing is, if he nicks me, why, the scar will just ruin my looks. kids in town. Good. Heck, you're always better off with a specialist anyway. Yeah? Well, I'll sure know where to look if I ever need a coward. Yep. Arnold, kill Hayward, I'll give you $600. All right, I'll give you $850. All right, I'll give you a thousand dollars. <laughs> they told me this outfit was an original. Get out of my way. What? You heard me? Get out of my way. Well, now, just who do you think you are? Arnold the Kid. Doc the Hayward. That name don't scare you? It scares me this much. Now you've gone just a little bit too far. You're really asking for it. Make your play. I'll make my play. 
Come take my flag. Dippity do, canaba dip. Double dare, knock off the chip. Now, what's this all about? You wanna know what that's all about? I'll tell you what that's all about. You knock off that chip and you'll see what it's all about. Uh-huh, okay. All right. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something right now. You just happen to know what I did? Do you happen to know what it did? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I killed 12 Indians and two horses in one fight. Now, how do you like those bananas? Pass the word to clear the street. I'll meet you here in half an hour. Where your gun? Think you might have something with that Minister Gant. They checked on him back east and he ain't no Pentecostal and he sure ain't no Mormon. They couldn't find one persuasion that ever heard tell of him. Those Bible boxes were sure long and heavy. Hey, maybe you and your husband could scout around the church and see what's in them boxes. Forget my husband. He's just some Philadelphia Jay I got tied up with to get me out here. The sooner I get rid of him, the better. Appears to me like he could be of some help. I hear he's pretty good with a six gun. It's Hayward out there practicing. I heard two shots. That means uh, he's got four to go. Six. Call him out. Hey, Wood! Did you want me for something? Been exactly a half hour. Mm-hmm. you draw first. Thank you.
Seven, shooter. What'd you do that for? I thought you wanted to get rid of that, Jay. I don't know. Something just come over me. Great work, Doc. You showed them. That away, Doc. Boy, you sure are something. Excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, Penny? Penny? <laughs> Did you hear about it? I heard. Yeah. About the only thing that saved me was the old killer instinct. <laughs> well, what about supper? I've got something to do. I'll see you later. But, but I ain't seen you all day. Doc Hayward, the sheriff wants to see you. Who? Huh? The sheriff wants to see you. Oh, just a minute, son. Penny, look. He says it's important. Oh, well, uh, well, all right. Uh, where are you going to be later? I'll be around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> darn women. So excitable. Whenever you're ready, Leonard. Hold it like that now. <laughs> That's dandy. Thank you. <laughs> there, that'll be a real nice picture for us. The man who got Arnold the kid. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, I guess we don't need this anymore. Oh, say, can I have that? I'd kind of like to keep it for a souvenir. <laughs> sure, Doc, help yourself. <laughs> Leonard, get that picture developed as soon as you can. Here, you want me to give you a hand with this? Yes, please. Have you seen this uh, Lady Ola? Ah, see, si, si, Senor de Fistak. The church? Ah, see. Si. Gracias, Senor. Penny! Hold it. What's the matter? Thought I heard something. all over town for you. What do you want? Is that you? Yes, that's me. I'll explain one of these days, but not right now. Oh, oh boy. I can't believe this. I just got... You mean you're a thief, a cattle rustler? What's this all about? I'll explain it later. Right now, I'm on government business. Like what? Like stealing rifles from a nice church? Shh. It's her. She's the agent. Well, let's get her. No, not now. Let's wait till Doc Hayward ain't here. Come on. Now. It's really none of your business. Now let's get out of here. Government business? What kind of government business? Hold your voice down. But I don't get it. One minute you're a bank robber, the next minute you're working for the government. All right. It's true. I am bad penny cushions. But the government said they'd clean up my record if I did this job for them. What job? I can't tell you anymore.
Now look, I don't know if you realize it, but our marriage is getting pretty shaky. Now I want to know what's going on. All right. Now can I count on you to keep this quiet? Of course! Hold your voice down! Of course! The government promised me amnesty if I found out who's smuggling rifles to the Indians. It's Gant and Bash. Gant and Bash? The minister is loyal minion? He's no minister. And he's no minion. I don't know, Penny. Everything's just moving too fast. First you came to me with a toothache. We got married. We got on the wagon train. Bang, bang, bang. Hooray, hooray. Then I find out you're a crook. Then you're not a crook. You're working with the government. Everything's just moving too fast. Poor little dude. You're tired, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Well, I think the best thing to do is to go to bed. Huh? I said, I think the best thing to do is to go to bed. Are you changing? Uh-huh. I'll just change in the closet. sleep like that. Those spurs will kill me. I've got to get to Fort Tyler to get the military. But you said, uh, I mean, I thought that we... Fort Tyler? Don't you understand? If the Indians get those rifles, they'll wipe out this town. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I better come with you then. I'm pretty handy with a gun, you know. I'm afraid not, dentist. You couldn't hit a bleeding elephant in the snow. Are you kidding? Twelve Indians, two horses, and Arnold the Kid? <laughs> Look, you might as well know. I shot the Indians from inside the wagon and Arnold the Kid from a window. What? You mean uh, I didn't... I mean, none of those... Uh, n nobody? Nobody. I'm sorry to have to tell you that, dentist, but I wouldn't want you to come with me. You might get hurt. Are you coming back? I'm afraid not. But, uh, but you're my wife. Well, that was just to get on the wagon train. I'm sorry. Vaya con Dios, amigo. Yes. something that I, uh, I have to tell you. Well, come on, Doc, speak up. <laughs> uh, oh, no, no more. I, uh, now, I don't want you to think that I'm not grateful for the drinks and for your all being so nice and everything. <laughs> but, uh, well, I'm just going to tell you straight out. Doc Haywood, the well-known Indian fighter, 
is a fake. Oh, my God. 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 Just as long as I'm standing here, right here, right now, it's the truth. Well, Doc, somebody killed them dozen Indians. Now, who killed them? My wife. Oh. <laughs> Just a second, <laughs> Just a second. Hold her up. You got the kid because we all seen it. Right. You got him zang with one shot while you was a falling down. That's, That's right. 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 Clean shot. My wife got him from a window. I wasted all my shots like a darn dumbbell, don't you remember? I shot two at the can, two at the sign, one at the skillet, and one in the pants. All right, now hold it, hold it. I was watching the whole thing. Now let's see, there was, uh, there was two at the can, Two at the sign, one at the skillet, and one in the pants. Two at the can, two at the sign, one at the skillet, and one in the pants. That's the story of my life, you know. Two things have always been my downfall. I have always been the most failure of anybody, and I'm too thin. I don't think you're too thin. Yeah, it's all bloat. Bloated thin failure, that's me. I think you're wonderful. I just love a man that can't make his mark in life. Penny. Penny, she's really something, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, she used me. And she, she tricked me. She made me think that she loved me. Oh. I should have known better. Nobody ever loved me. Did you know I had to take my own cousin to the graduation dance? Ah! Oh. I threw up on her dress. You are really my kind of guy. I got on a romance track. Then I got on a gunslinger's track. I gotta get back on that dentist track. Go ahead, laugh. Laugh all you like. I'm not a failure. I'm a dentist. A real dentist. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to spread dental health through the West like a plague. Come on, I want to close up. Good night, Doc. Brush your dentist twice a day, visit your toothbrush once a year.
I think I know her. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Isn't that uh, Laughing Deer's daughter? No. The deer girl married White Antelope. Rotten Buffalo's cousin?
Ah. Uh, uh, what day? What day? Uh oh, what day? <laughs> Dentist, you're crazy! Are you alright? Except for these bindings, they're killing my hands. Oh. I figured the best time to get out is after they all get a little drunker. You know something? You're a lot spunkier than I thought you were. <laughs> I get that from my mother. <laughs> Sate one egg. He's crazy about me. Sate one egg. Looks like we're going dancing. Haywood, gunfighter. <laughs> Phony gunfighter. Hey, Doc, uh, how about us having a real gunfight, huh? And to make it even, it'll be just you against me and the good reverend here. Now, uh, what do you think about that? You want to know what I think about that? Well, I'll just show you what I think about that. <laughs> Put it on, Haywood. Any 
Anytime you're ready, Haywood. The horse is right back there, Penny. Let's go. Penny, go. Jesse's out there. Jesse! Let's go. What, hey? Rider coming in! Get ready, they're coming. Get the women and kids back into the church. Get back into church! Sure taking their sweet time about it. Devil, hold it. Doc Haywood's with him. It sure is. Open up, boys. Everything's under control. Jesse! You're alive! Yeah! I know! <laughs> I'll take my friend Black Eagle and fix him up with a big rare steak. <laughs> Adjustments are free up to 60 days. After that, it's a dollar visit. <laughs> I'm so glad you're back. Me too! now.